Hi guys, Dr. YouTube here. I thought I'd bring you this real quick. Go check out the beer today. Pluto, the sometimes planet planet, may be hiding a pretty huge secret. Well, two huge secrets, actually. Astronomers in Spain believe that hiding behind Pluto, obscured from our view, are two additional giant planets. Spanish scientists in Madrid discovered the potential for the two massive celestial bodies at the outer reach reaches of our solar system after studying strange patterns in the orbit of rocky objects around Pluto, including the newly discovered dwarf planet 2012 VP113. Scientists believe the first hidden wor world would be about 10 times the mass of Earth. They believe that this planet is moving in resonance with a bigger planet that is somewhere between Mars and Jupiter in size and would orbit 200 times the Earth's distance from the Sun. But can we ever conclusively confirm the existence of these two planets? Well, Scott Shepard at the Carnegie Institution for Science had this to say. As there are only a few of these extremely distant objects known, it's hard to say anything definitive about the number or location of any distant planets. However, in the near future, we should have more objects to work with to help us determine the structure of the outer solar system. So there you have it. Time will tell. Very controversial subject. But when we study it, we find that it may hold answers to some of life's most perplexing questions. Everything from evolution to how we came about as a species to current Earth changes and what might lie ahead for us in the future. My name is Robert Sepper, and this video is my attempt to explain... Check him out at USAK Unit News. To understand everything thoroughly, we must start from our past. God created us. As you do research on our mitochondrial DNA, you find that it goes back into the range of 150,000 years based on the mitochondrial DNA, which is, I, I think, pretty much incontrovertible. If we're 150 to 200,000 years old, that throws a huge, gigantic wrench into the establishment <laughs> position that we evolved from creatures that were walking upright approximately four million years ago. They did, we did. The early Australopithecines, Lucy, everyone is familiar with her at around 3.2 to 3.5 million years ago. And they're finding Look like you. new ones all no. the time. And all God created us, guys. Is to qualify as human is to be upright walking. If you're an upright walking pre, you know, pre-creature, you're called a pre-human. And even though all of those creatures, right through Neanderthal, from, from Lucy at 4 million That's years crazy. ago, right through the Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthal, to Cro-Magnon, no, right to Cro-Magnon, all We're of not from monkeys, guys. don't look anything like human beings as we are today. They, they are as different from us as primates. In fact, they look like primates. They look like upright walking primates. Mm -hmm. Up through Neanderthal, back to Lucy, and whatever's going to come before her. What could make something change so radically, literally overnight, in anthropological terms, and be anything remotely associated with Darwinism? of the Sumerians 4,000 years ago, as chronicled by Zechariah Sitchin in his books, The Earth Chronicles, I believe that is the most logical and reasonable explanation that there is for how we came to be. 20 some odd years ago, Zechariah Sitchin wrote The Twelfth Planet. In The Twelfth Planet, he describes ancient writings and texts by the Sumerians depicting a 3,600-year orbit of Nibiru. But the Sumerians are rarely spoken about in history books. Who were the Sumerians? And what can an ancient civilization possibly know about how we came to be? 
We only hear about like the Egyptians and the Mayans or the Incans, Romans, Greeks. The first culture we have on Earth were the Sumerians, and they showed up 6,000 years ago where modern-day Iraq is. It's right between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. It was then known as Mesopotamia, Babylon, but also Sumeria, where the first culture on Earth stems, and they have left us over 100 of the, of the first for high society to take place. For instance, stemming from Sumeria 6,000 years ago, they were the first ones to invent writing. They have a system of over 400 characters. It's where we came from, guys. Text. Basically, they God created them. Stylus or an object with a wedge, and would twist and turn and make all these characters that came up to about 400 characters, and they had their own complete language, like an alphabet that we use today, A through Z. But this stemmed out of Sumeria 6,000 years ago, and all of the first for high society come from them. Time, the calendar, math, schools, courts, judges, systems of law. All of this originated, originated in Sumeria, which was then known as uh, Mesopotamia, Babylon, today's modern-day Iraq. The Sumerians are actually probably the most influential culture of the ancient world. Not the Egyptians, not the Greeks, not the Romans, the Sumerians. The Sumerians invented, for example, the zodiac. All of the, the symbols that we still have today for the zodiac were created by the Sumerians. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it short here, but uh, check out the Sumerians, guys, the planets and everything, all right? Another planet in our solar system that gods, super beings, live on. Subscribe to my channel. These beings come to Earth. The Sumerians Seven, the truth will free you. Timothy Tucker, Con TV. But it was living gods. They were the, mm -hmm. the Sumerians. Dr. YouTube, Timothy Tucker. Living gods who lived and worked and, and, and had their lives among them. They were the Anunnaki. Among those Anunnaki, there were 12 leaders, 12 super gods, the bosses, the boss of bosses. Those 12 gods come down and are present in the Egyptian culture, in the Greek culture, and in the Roman culture. They just have different names. Yep. All right, guys, check it out. Later.